For all those who uh, were wondering what a Sonex wingtip looks like, it looks a bit like this. It's a glass fibre resin moulding um, and uh, it's relatively stiff and uh, quite nicely made. Nice finish on it and uh, when you put it up against the end of the wing here's one I prepared earlier children it looks a bit like that now to get from that to that you have to do a little bit of work to the actual tip moulding itself the first thing you have to do is to take out the rear web there completely so that it's open backed effectively and then to clear the um, rear um, what is that it's the rear spar that's what it is to clear the rear spar um, you need to take out a notch out of these about 20 millimeters in from the end so take that section out there and that section out there also on the bottom edge which is this one you need to take out a notch to clear the main spar And I did all that using my trusty Dremel. I used two different bits in it. I have a cutting disc like that. That one's actually quite well worn down now. They are bigger than that when uh, they start off. And a little sanding drum. Standard sort of Dremel sanding drum. And that does most of it, and then finish it off with uh, a number of files. Um, I use a standard metalworking file for doing the rough stuff. And then when it gets a bit more um, to the final, I've got some various different rat tail files. This one's quite a large one. Um, but I use this quite a lot to finish off the wing tip. Once that's all done, I need to check the uh, depth of the edge to make sure it doesn't foul on anything in uh, inside the wing. I had to uh, cut down the uh, top one in the center area because it was hitting the uh, the, the next rib across. So um, I had to reduce that down to about uh, 15, 16 millimetres um, from the outside edge just to miss that. And uh, then pop it into the hole. The tricky bits are finding those holes because obviously... That's drilled uh, a drilled bracket on the inside, and of course, as soon as you put the uh, wing tip in the hole, you can't see the holes. So I had to calculate where they were, and I got pretty close. And once I'd got one, it was quite easy then to uh, work out where the next one, because they're all equally spaced, and. Uh, the same for uh, this end. It's very difficult to drill that way. I haven't got anything that'll go in in that way. So again, had to calculate where they were. Drill them from this side. Um, got pretty close. And I mean, if you're um, pilot drilling to start off with, with a small drill, um, if you make an error, it's going to get drilled out to uh, to a larger size later anyway, so uh, it shouldn't make any difference. The other things um, I've had to do um, were when I put the uh, wing tip into position, 
the curvature of the aft and forward skins didn't quite match the uh, shape of the wingtip and uh, it was a little proud uh, the skin was proud over the top here and there so after I've drilled it and clear coated it I've then uh, used the file and uh, trimmed the skins back so that uh, it's pretty even all the way along and this is the bottom of the wing I've got the wing upside down at the moment also another tip is when drilling up through from the bottom don't push too hard because if you do you do that and the drill pops out through the top which I have done in a couple of places and to get the top to fit it didn't fit very well at all I clear code all the way along here did the back edge did the center and then lastly did this edge here the reason for that is that it didn't fit very well and to make it uh, fit without having to uh, do a lot of glass firing or filling or getting really involved by pushing the tip in there it made it fit a lot lot better the only problem with that is that the holes in the skin are too close to the edge of the wing tip then so i've had to re-drill the holes for the uh, in the in the uh, skin about five millimeters further in so i've got two holes for most of these along here um, and then it's fitted really really well as you can see it's pretty damn spot on I've also had to cut a thin slither off the skin obviously because it's five millimeters further in and file it up this side similar but just a slight push in made it fill up in, in behind the, uh, the skin nicely didn't have to re-drill any of those holes and uh, it's all clicoed up now and looking good I'm quite pleased with it it's a lot better than I anticipated um, because of being a glass fibre moulding it's never going to fit perfectly every moulding that comes out of uh, a glass fibre mould is slightly different um, and it's not a a precision way of making something so uh, what I've got to do now is uh, take it off clean it up deburr all the metal parts and then we're ready to rivet it now I'm waiting to see whether Sonics are going to come back to me because I've detected an error in the uh, plans in that on the plans it calls for me to use uh, the CCP 41 rivets which really are only long enough for two thin thicknesses of aluminium not a thickness of aluminium and a somewhat fat piece of glass fibre um, and I notice on the um, extra instructions that you can download off the Sonics website for installing the wing tip. It calls for um, CCP 44s and 46s, but doesn't tell you where to put them. Um, so I've sent a message off to Kerry to, uh, to ask for guidance um, as to what type and uh, what length of rivets to use because again on the plans over there it tells you to put um, 
countersunk rivets. Now I'm not very happy about doing that because I can dimple the uh, the metal, but um, I would then have to countersink the glass fibre, and uh, there would be hardly any glass fibre left. It would be cutting through the uh, the matting, and um, I know from experience that it's quite likely that the glass fibre is going to crack and fall apart when you put the rivet through it. The only way to stop that is to put a washer on the inside, a metal washer on the inside, um, to stop the rivet from bursting the um, glass fibre apart. But of course you can't do that because there's no way of getting your hand inside once this panel is on. So I would prefer to put standard rivets in, um, which gives uh, the maximum amount of uh, glass fibre left um, so it doesn't crack and fall apart. And of course, if it does crack and fall apart, you can't see it either, so I'd never know. Having said that, there are 50-odd rivets holding this uh, <laughs> wing tip on. So if a couple crack, it's not going to be a huge issue. It's not going to fall off. But, as you probably gathered by now, I like everything to be right and perfect. And uh, I, I want to do it right once. I don't want to be drilling out rivets and taking it all apart and redoing it again and sending off to the United States for another wingtip panel. I want to do it right now. So we'll see what the answer comes back. should be uh, back to me later on today. And, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm going to strip this apart again now and um, clean all the holes up. More later. So just a quick update. Um, I've started uh, the riveting and uh, I've got those ones in and those ones in. I'm just about to do the ones across the underside. I've decided to go with... Um, CCP 42s, they seem to uh, to be the right size. Um, after having chatted with Sonics, you can use aluminium rivets to hold this on. The, uh, the idea behind that is they're easier to drill out if you need to get access into the wing. Um, I haven't had any problems drilling out a uh, <laughs> stainless rivet so far uh, might be a bit different in glass fiber but then to be quite honest uh, it's once you've riveted the uh, the glass fiber you've wrecked it probably anyway so um, we'll see but uh, yes yeah, so i'm going with uh, the stainless steel ccp 42s i'm not not doing countersunk ones on the leading edge. Uh, it's going to be the same blind pop rivets all the way around. So there we go. That's part of the way there. And there it is. One complete wing tip. All riveted on. Edges all nice and shiny. It's absolutely brilliant so inside is the conduit ready to take the wingtip light the wingtip light bearing in mind the wing is upside down will sit here and I'm going to use the uh, wheel and combination one um, which has forward pointing navigation light so one side's green one side's red rearward facing white light as a substitute for a tail light and sideways facing strobe um, all LED all low power um, and not because I'm going to fly at night but it's there just in case, or it will be there just in case. And 
so that I can uh, be seen when manoeuvring on the ground as well as in the air. So there we go, one wing box complete. Um, and I'm reasonably pleased with it. Not too bad a job at all. Putting the wing tip on has taken probably in the order of three to four hours. Mostly because of um, sorting out the fit, um, not actually doing it, but um, making it fit correctly and then trimming up the, uh, the ends of the wing to make it look pretty. So after 90 plus hours of work, there is one complete wing. Uh, I'm still toying up with do I make the other wing now or do I do the aerolon and um, flap for this wing first. Mm, haven't made my mind up. I'll have a little think about it, but uh, actually building the wing was a lot easier than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be the the difficult bit um, but uh, in actual fact mainly due to the fact that uh, everything in the kit is uh, well made the holes are all very precise everything's cut very precisely uh, it's all fitted together reasonably well a couple of little issues here and there but hardly anything really um, quite an easy construction project haven't had to use anything particularly clever in the way of tools. Had to buy the dimple die to dimple the uh, rivets for the leading edge. Um, used my special nibbling tool to cut the hole for the pitot. Um, and used my pre-existing glass fibre skills for the wing tip. So uh, there we have it. And uh, as soon as I've made some more progress and decided whether I'm going to build the other wing or the aerolon and uh, flap for this wing, I'll make another video. But until then, see you later.